space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the... <clears throat> Sorry about that, I couldn't resist. Hello all my theorists, and welcome back to another What If Theories. And the question today is, will warp drive be possible? Okay, so when we all think about warp drives, the typical image of Star Trek Enterprise pops up in our mind. The ship moving faster and faster as warp 1, then 2, and 5. However, what does warp drive mean? Most of us brush it off as fun sci-fi, however, that is where some scientists get their greatest ideas. Now being 2016, more things have gone from science fiction to science fact. More discoveries are made where impossible theoretical ideas then become plausible. The man who has been trying to make warp speeds plausible is theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre. They even named warp drive the Alcubierre Drive, and with good reason. In a 1994 paper that he published with the Alcubierre equation that would make warp drive possible, it was then mathematically proven that within the laws of physics that you could warp space-time. Imagine this. You are standing on an escalator and you aren't physically moving, however, you are moving to a different point. This is the basic concept of how warp fields work is by compressing space in front of the spaceship while rapidly expanding space behind it. So we got the math and the concept seems to work and it's 2016 so the holdup is, well, energy. That pretty important factor that we aren't so great at yielding yet. On top of that, it's an exotic form of energy called negative energy. The theory of quantum mechanics predicts that empty space is actually constantly shimmering with microscopic pulses of energy as particles pop in and out of existence. To make negative energy, you have to find a way to suppress this constant chatter. An atomic physicist, Steve Lamoureux, has been hard at work over a decade working on this problem. Steve set out in his lab to create negative energy for the first time. In order to do this, he set up two plates in a vacuum chamber that have been perfectly flat down to the atomic level. As these plates get closer and closer to each other, the forces around the plates in free space known as zero-point energy start to force them together. When the plates get extremely close, this force grows stronger and stronger, and the forces outside are stronger than the forces between the plates or the negative energy between the plates is expanding space around them, which is known as the Casimir effect. This is the first time ever negative energy has been recorded. The only problem is the amount detected was so small it would be equivalent to the red blood cell in the Earth gravitational field. So we need much, much more. However, if you start adding up thousands of these plates, like in the experiment, you can generate a much more measurable force. Okay. Let's start stacking plates. However, we realize not enough force could be generated. First thoughts are we still need enough negative energy equal to the mass of the foreseeable universe, which is impossible. However, recently revisited, Chris Vandenbroek worked on some of the math and Vandenbroek detailed this by saying that the total energy can be reduced dramatically by keeping the surface area of the warp bubble itself microscopically small while at the same time expanding the spatial volume inside the bubble. However, Vandenbroek concludes that the energy densities required are still unachievable. The important part noting here is that there is some real math and workings inside physics proving what is needed even though, at the moment, unachievable. The research and studies published does lead to more people working on the problem. It's just the problems and hurdles to overcome are actually, even in 2016, pretty massive. Even if we generate a warp drive, what happens to humans inside of it? Theories have been suggested that anything inside the bubble would be exposed to extremely high temperatures due to Hawking radiation. Even if that wasn't a problem, we can't steer or control the craft as we can't send signals in front of the warp bubble. So much more work has to be done. That's okay, we have time and other projects we are working on like fusion and alternative means of energy for space travel before warp becomes a seriously revisited endeavor. So we will most likely have colonized Mars way, way before warp drive becomes a thing, which is just fine with me as long as we are advancing our civilization and making progress to boldly go where no man has gone before. It's just at best estimates doing so with a warp drive is most likely hundreds of years away, if not more. Thanks for watching everyone and let me know about any theories or thoughts you find interesting and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.